Welcome back to our class. Today we are going to be looking at uh, this paper, the final paper uh, for 2023 Life Science. 2023 Life Science. So, um, what are we going to look at today? We are going to go through this paper, objectives, we see those people who wrote the paper and then uh, find out if uh, you have got the what, all the marks. Um, let's start with the, uh, the first question, that is section A. So you have to download that paper from Thunder Eduke dot com yes if you want it uh yes you can find it uh, on thundereduke.com yes all right the first question um i always advise students that you cannot go to the paper and you leave objective unanswered even if you don't know the objective at least try to guess and then you never know uh your guessing could be correct and then you get marks concerning about that objective so you cannot leave it because you don't know it and then you leave it unanswered. So you must always try your best so that you can get a mark, at least those two marks uh, for that uh, question. So um, let's start with the first question. It's about diabetes. They're saying that diabetes mellitus, as I usually tell you that uh, from our distinction material, that when you talk about diabetes, you have to talk about mellitus. Don't just say diabetes. Diabetes mellitus or diabetes insipidus. Diabetes of sugar and diabetes of water. So this is diabetes of sugar. So it's caused by, uh -huh, number one, they are saying that over uh, secretion of glucagon, no, under secretion of glucagon, then... Uh, uh, over secretion of insulin and then under secretion of insulin. Yes, the best answer is the uh, under secretion of insulin because this diabetes is, is, is what you usually call a uh, sugar diabetes, meaning that uh, the glucose cannot, excess glucose cannot be uh, converted uh, to glycogen by the liver. Yes, so it means that you have too much sugar. Uh, in the body and then you end up suffering from this uh, condition called diabetes uh, mellitus. So the answer is D. So you expected to have two marks there. Then let's go to the second question saying that receptors that are stimulated by the low water um, level in the blood are located, are located in the where? Where do we find uh, these uh, receptors which is stimulated um, at the, uh, as a result of low level of water in the blood or in the body. So, uh, which receptors are those? We call them because we are talking about water. So, it means that is osmo. So, it means that those receptors are called osmo receptors. Yes. Sometimes we call it the, the, the they are found in the thirst uh, centers in the hypothalamus. So, in this case, the answer is going to be. Uh, B, hypothalamus. Don't forget that it is hypothalamus which uh, determine, it is hypothalamus which determine the, 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 or which produce ADH. Yes. So, uh, this receptor are found in the hypothalamus. Two marks there. They're saying that melanchith uh, on a neuron, uh, or on the, Nerve cell, what's the function? Provide electrical insulation. Uh, yes. Transport impulse towards the cell body. Towards the cell body, that is a dendrite. Receives impulse from the axon. Receives impulse from the axon, that is the effector. Converts uh, stimulus, uh, stimuli, uh, converts stimuli into a nerve impulse. And that is a receptor. So this is a receptor. Basically, this is a receptor, this is a effector, and then transport impulse towards the cell body. This is a dendrite. So the answer becomes A. So expect that to be A. Um, sorry for that. And then we are saying that, uh, we are saying that 
the, so the answer is M. They're saying that the structure yeah, where sperms are temporarily stored in the testes, the structure where the uh, sperms are temporarily stored is the, how do you call that uh, uh, um, structure? Yes, definitely, yes, it's, 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 it's found in the testes. Ne? But not all the parts of the testes will store the sperms. Hence, uh, we will not uh, take testes. Epididymis, that's where when sperms are being produced in the seminiferous tubes, yes, they are not yet uh, mature to full capacity. So what does it do? Uh, these sperms, they go to the epididymis and they stay there for a short period of time so that they can mature fully and then they can be used for fertilization. So the answer becomes B. D, this is the vas deferens. The vas deferens is just a tube which transports sperms from epididymis to ejaculatory ducts, penis. Obviously, everyone knows the penis even if we don't explain it. Yes. Then we go to the next question. Uh, the next question is talking about... The next question is talking about which one of the following... Uh, uh, is a function of uh, amniotic fluid. What's the function? Uh, many students uh, have seen that many students uh, talk about amniotic fluid. They relate it to nutrition because it is a fluid. You expect it to be uh, nourishing the fetus. No. Amniotic fluid is not related to nutrition. That's why even here on the objective, the first answer they gave is provide nutrition so that it attracts the attention of the people who don't know the actual answer of the amniotic fluid. Therefore, in this case, the answer is going to be, uh, it's not going to be nutrition, so this one is out, yes. Uh, then protects the fetus against mechanical injury, this is correct. Uh, let's see if there is a more correct answer. Supplies oxygen to the fetus? No. And then removes metabolic wastes from the fetus? No. That's not a function of amniotic uh, fluid. So the actual answer is going to be B. So there you get two marks. I hope I'm clear there. Yes. So let's go to the next question. The brain. Yeah, they're talking about the brain here. Brain is simple. I always tell my students that before you answer any question, yeah, you see this uh, 2023 uh, uh, final paper, yes? I expected everyone to get all the marks, ne? yes, to get all these marks, yes. Uh, but you know, as a paper, as a past paper is always easy, but a, 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 a paper where you go and sit, it, be, it is always difficult. But you can see it here as a, uh, an easy paper, but when they tell you to sit on uh, uh, in, 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 in exam room and then we give you when you don't know, it becomes difficult for you. But as long as you prepare, uh, this passing is, 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 is a little bit uh, simple. Yes, is a little bit what? Uh, simple as long as you you read make sure that you remember what you have read by repeating and repeating and repeating what you have read all right number one what is number one is corpus callosum number two number one is corpus callosum number two is uh, cerebrum number three is um cerebellum number four is the medulla oblongata don't forget that I always tell my students that this first swelling is not medulla oblongata. It's called a pons, but you don't usually ask it. Uh, the second swelling is what called a medulla oblongata. You must always know the functions of each. All right. Which one of the following represents corpus callosum? Yeah, obviously, we have said that one represents corpus callosum. So, um, A is going to be the most correct answer in that regard. Uh -huh. Then they are saying that the uh, 1.7 is saying which one of the following is a function of part 3. Part 3 is what? Yes, we have seen that part 3 is the cerebellum. Yes, cerebellum is responsible for coordination of um, uh, 
voluntary movement. There is a confusion. I always tell my students that don't confuse coordination and control. It does not control voluntary movements. It coordinates voluntary voluntary movements. Yes. All right. Let's go to the objectives they said. Control voluntary movement. No, 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 no. Doesn't control. You see, they always give you a confusing answer as a so make sure that you don't rush when you're answering uh, such questions. So, it coordinates voluntary movement. So the answer becomes uh, C. So that is the most correct answer. Controls voluntary involuntary actions. That's not the function of um, uh, cerebellum. That's the function of medulla oblongata. Controls all sensation. It receives and interprets all sensations. Is done by number two. So the actual answer here becomes C. Coordinates all voluntary movements. Placenta is formed by. There is a video where, where, which I created and it was showing you the animation of the placenta and how does it uh, form. So here is the number one. They are saying that um, amniotic fluid and amnion. Amniotic fluid, no. Chorion, chorionic villi and endom, uh, endometrium. Yes, it could be the answer. But let's see if we have the most correct answer. Always read all the objectives and find out the most correct answer. They're saying that ammonion, no. The moment there is ammonion, no. Uh, amniotic fluid and the cord, no. Uh, don't forget that uh, during the last stage of uh, the development of the zygote until implantation, we say that it forms a ball of, hollow ball of cells, which we call the blastula or bla blastocyte. So this blastula forms the outer layer, which we call the chorionic, uh, which we call the chorion. The chorion forms finger-like projection called the chorionic villi, which are used for implantation. And implantation occurs on the walls of the endometrium or the inner lining of the uterus, which we call the endometrium. Hence, endometrium and the chorionic villi becomes the part of this forms what you call a pla center hence b becomes the most correct answer so so um let's go to the next question a uh, over secretion of hormone produced by thyroid gland may result in a person over secretion over secretion of a hormone produced by the thyroid gland Wh which hormone is that first ask yourself which hormone is that thyroid gland obviously cannot produce uh, cannot produce luteinizing hormone definitely is going to produce thyroxine thyroid gland thyroxine thyroid gland thyroxine so you have to know that yes so meaning that they're asking the effect of thyroxine when it is over secreted don't forget that you have what you call under secretion and over secretion. So in this case is over secretion. I stated it in my book uh, for distinction material very, very, very well. And actually the way they brought it here is exactly how I try to explain it. I'll show you. Let's first find out the answer. Uh, gaining weight because of increase in the metabolic uh, reaction no if there is increase in a metabolic reaction we expect to have low weight don't forget that thyroxine is related to metabolic rate high uh, production of thyroxine you expect to have a high metabolic rate and if you have high metabolic rate it means that the food is being broken down very 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 fast meaning that uh, you might not have food to 
be stored and then you have this gaining. So in the actual sense, it looks to be 